Hello friends, this video on evolution part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we are going to talk about biological evolution. So when we discuss biological evolution, we are going to talk about the evolution of different organisms or group of related organisms and here we are going to discuss about the Darwinian theory in detail because Darwinian theory talks a lot about this biological evolution. So Darwinian theory of evolution. Now, as I had mentioned before that Darwin's theory had two important pillars. So the two important concepts which were spoken about in Darwin's theory were one was natural selection and the other was descent with modification. So these were the two important pillars of Darwinian theory of evolution. Now we will talk about each of them one by one. So let us try to understand what do we mean by descent with modification. So the meaning of descent with modification, descent is related to the word descendant. So that means something which is coming in the next generation. So every generation is coming with some modification. That is what it means. And when we say natural selection, it means nature also has the power to select or to deselect. So the nature can also accept or reject changes. So if some changes are happening and they are happening for good, then nature will support those changes and those changes will remain. And if some changes are happening which are not for good, so those changes will be discarded and they will soon become extinct. So these are basically the meaning of descent with modification and natural selection. However, we will understand them in detail. So the first thing that Darwin spoke about was that complex organisms evolve from simpler organisms over a period of time. So as per Darwin, it was the simpler organisms which came first and from those simple organisms gradually the complex organisms have evolved. So when you think of simple organisms, you can think of any unicellular organism which has just one cell. So one cell means they are all simple. So one cell is going to do all the job. So there is not much complexity involved with the structure or the function of that organism. But gradually over a period of time, these small small cells or these single single cells, they got united together somewhat like a symbiotic union where all the cells got benefited from each other. So in that kind of um, an association, they all got united and gradually multicellular organisms were formed. Now if you think of a multicellular organisms, what do they have? They have multiple cells. Right? And each cell will again have all the cell organelles. Now again, when you talk about the, the structure of the cell, that also varies from eukaryotes to prokaryotes. So prokaryotes again were the simpler organisms where you do not have distinct cell organelles. It is like you just have one cell and inside you have everything scattered here and there. That is how it is in case of prokaryotes. But eukaryotes are more complex and more well organized. So that means prokaryotes also came before eukaryotes. So eukaryotes gradually developed over a period of time. Now what happens when many such single cells or many such unicellular organisms would have united? So it, it would be something like if one cell is engulfing another cell. So what will happen? You will have one cell inside another cell. So now if that but big cell is again engulfing another cell. So what will you have? You will have one cell inside which you have two cells. So if that cell engulfs yet another cell. So you actually have one cell and inside which you have three cells. So basically that is becoming a multicellular organism because now you do not have one cell. Now you have more than one cell. And in reality this is how multicellular organisms evolved. So if you think of any cell organelle, for example if you think of the powerhouse of the cell like mitochondria. So what is mitochondria? Mitochondria in turn is also made up of so many small small different parts. So mitochondria can be thought of as a, nothing but a cell of a free living bacteria which was maybe engulfed by another cell and that is how it is inside. So this is how the unicellular organisms gradually gave rise to multicellular organisms and over a period of time the multicellular organisms became more and more complex. So if you look at the simple multicellular organisms, there you do not see a lot of complexity in their body structure or the way they function. 
For example, just remember the Animalia Kingdom for once. So the Animalia Kingdom, we have spoken about so many different phyla. So we started with the Porifers, Porifers, Cylentrates, Nematodes. Now you would have seen that as you move up and you finally reach the vertebrates. So what happens, the complexity or the structural organization of the body also becomes more and more complex. You have more distinct systems for each and every purpose. So the complexity actually increases. So the same thing happened in evolution. So initially the very simple life forms were formed on the earth and those simpler life forms gradually made small small changes and gave rise to complex organisms. So the next important part of Darwinian theory is the natural selection. So what is natural selection? Natural selection says that nature selects the fittest and eliminates the inferior ones. So when I say fittest, what do we mean? So fittest doesn't refer to the physical fitness of any uh, living organism. It means to say that any organism which has a trait that, uh, that adds an advantage to its survival, that helps it to survive better in the environment or that helps it to adjust better with the environment. So that is if it has anything like that, so nature will support that. So fit, fittest means or fitness here means that the organism has some trait which acts as a survival advantage to that organism. And any other trait which doesn't uh, provide any advantage to the organism, so they are all eliminated by the nature and over a period of time they vanish or they become distinct. So let us suppose that if a member of a species develop a function or develop something which is advantage due to mutation, then I mean small small changes happen due to mutations, right? The genetic mutations give rise to small changes. So let us say any such small change, if it is an advantage for that organism, so what will happen? Nature will support that. And what happens when nature supports that? When nature supports the chances that that particular feature will be seen in the next generation also, that increases. Now, as that particular feature is being displayed for the next few generations, so that becomes something very common. So over, say, five, six generations, all organisms are being produced with that particular feature. So that becomes a common thing. And that this is how evolution happens and what happens to the inferior members the members without that feature they gradually die out because even on reproduction the, their traits are not getting displayed it is the uh, advantageous trait that is getting displayed so over a period of time those traits will vanish and those organisms will die out So we can say that nature supports the advantageous genetic mutations. So as we all know that mutations give rise to new traits in an individual. And if these new traits are advantageous, then nature also supports them. So how can, now you might have a question in your mind that how, how does the support of the nature matters? How does it matter whether nature supports it or not? Okay, so nature has extreme power in itself. So let us take example of human beings. All of you might be aware that human beings have done a lot of artificial breeding or artificial selection, whatever you call it. So you would have seen that in terms of vegetables, so they actually try to interbreed two different varieties of plants to get a desired variety of plant. Right, and that is how the entire agriculture thing happens. So all desired varieties are combined together and then an hybrid is obtained. Now human beings have been extremely successful in the process of artificial breeding in the sense that it, this process of artificial breeding could actually produce drastic changes in the breeds of animals as well as plants in quite a couple of years. It took few years not more than that so now if human beings can make these changes then why can't nature do the same thing over several years so if human beings are able to do it over a couple of months or over a couple of years nature can also do the same thing over a longer period of time and that is what nature is doing exactly so what happens is whichever is whichever 
trait or whichever property provides a survival advantage to the organisms so those properties are encouraged by nature that is why those properties are more seen in the next generations whereas the less preferred properties gradually die out so they gradually fade and finally they are not seen anymore so that is what is the concept of natural selection and the term which defines natural selection is survival of the fittest so when we say fittest it means those traits which gives advantage to the organism to adjust better to the environment to survive in a better way so let us take the example of giraffe now it 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 has been observed it has been found out that long time back giraffes never used to have their long necks so they had shorter necks than what we see them today now when these giraffes had a shorter neck what happened was they mostly used to feed on the uh, small shrubs so because they are smaller in height so it was easier for them to feed on them but eventually it so happened that sometimes the there was scarcity of the shrubs because there are many other animals which feed on the same shrubs or sometimes something happened because of which there were no shrubs available so there was scarcity of food so what was favorable for the giraffe the favorable thing for giraffe was to have a long neck so if it had a long neck it could even reach to the taller parts of the trees something of this sort so now what happened was that long neck what happened due to some changes in the genetic mutations but since this having a long neck was a preferred thing was an advantageous mutation therefore it was preserved over generations so preservation of a functional advantage over that enables a species to compete better so in this case since the giraffe has a longer neck so it has it enables it to survive in a better way so even if the smaller trees are not available it can easily feed on the taller trees the taller it can reach the taller parts of the plants so this was something which was favored by nature and over a few generations it was seen that the population of the giraffes with shorter necks reduced drastically whereas the population of the giraffes with long the next increase drastically and again after certain period of time it was seen that the shorter next giraffes became almost extinct so whatever we see today are the long necked giraffe giraffes so this is an example where we see that nature selects the advantageous change so we can say that natural selection is the process in which organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce offspring and when they produce offspring similar to them what happens their population keep on increasing so better adapted organisms are always liked by nature and are always supported by nature so let us look at another example of natural selection So let us suppose that in a particular locality you see these red beetles. So you can see the red beetles which are present in uh, some locality of a forest or in a tree or whatever you call it. So here you have a lot of red beetles. Now what happens? These beetles reproduce amongst themselves and they produce more and more beetles, and that is how their population increases. Now let us suppose that. as a matter of chance there some genetic changes happened or some mutation happened and as a result of which one green beetle was formed so here you can see just one green beetle was formed so others all are red so here you can clearly see that the population of the red beetle is definitely larger than that of the green beetle because green beetle is just one in number but now over a period of time it was seen that since the background since the place where these beetles were staying they were all green like green plants green trees so what happened was the green beetle was not much visible when they were present on the trees so whenever the crows came to feed or to eat the beetles so the green beetles were not easily visible to the crow so the crow was eating up all the red beetles so red beetles were more easily caught by their predators so what happened as a result of this the number of red beetles started decreasing because of their predators and what happened to the green beetle so earlier there was just one green beetle but that beetle will also undergo reproduction and in reproduction there will there are always chances that you might end up having a green beetle again 
and here if you see this green beetle provides a survival advantage so green beetle provides a survival advantage how by protecting itself from the predators so that is how the green beetle can survive in a better way than the red beetle so the nature will support the survival or the nature will support the green beetle so as a result what happened whenever reproduction happened the probability of getting a green beetle increased because nature was also supporting it. So over a period of time it was seen that the red beetle started decreasing in numbers because they were mostly eaten up by the crow and the green beetle started increasing in number because of the reproduction and because it was also providing a survival advantage. Now after some time it was observed that all the beetles were green the dead beetles over a period of time they were completely extinct they completely disappeared so it was all green beetles so what does this show this shows that with natural selection evolution can happen so what evolved in this case the green beetles evolved from the red beetles so earlier only red beetles existed but later evolution made it possible that green beetles evolved from red beetles. So this is an example of natural selection. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.